Good evening and welcome to Healers Enlightened Network. We are so honored to have you with us tonight. Tonight is webinar 129 and we are going to be talking about IBS, Crohn's, the gut microbiome and the candida diet. So I want everybody just to bow their heads just to bring the peace and allow the Lord to come in to be with us. We want him to be guiding us in everything that we do. To feel that harmony and those graces. Beautiful. He is here. We've got several archangels. We've got several guides. We're very blessed tonight. Beautiful. Thank you so very much. Thank you. Tonight, we are going to let Paulo begin with IBS. And I have this up, sweetie, for you to go ahead and take it away. Okay, thank you, Cynthia. You're Let me welcome. share my screen. Let's see, I think it's here. Okay. Let's see. Hello everyone, thank you for being here with us today. So today I will talk a little bit about the IBS and also I will be giving some suggestions. If you are a, an energy healer and you are working with people that is having this imbalance, you can share also some of the information I will be given and they can do it themselves. So first of all, let's see if I'm having a problem here. Okay, yes. So what is IBS? IBS is the irritable bowel syndrome. It's a disorder that affects the large intestine. IBS can be felt anywhere in the abdomen, around the belly. But most of the time, people report that they feel it in the lower abdomen. Sometimes the inflammation, the pain, the discomfort in the lower abdomen gets worse after eating. Sometimes not. Sometimes, yes. Sometimes it's worse after a bowel movement. The most common symptoms of this imbalance are abdominal pain, cramping, bloating in the lower abdomen, um, bowel movements that are harder or looser than usual, change in how often people is having bowel movement. Mucus in the poop, blood in the stall due to rectal bleeding. Some people, uh, they have iron deficiency. So if you are working, for example, with someone that is having this imbalance, you can muscle test and you can check uh, the iron level in the body of the person, uh, sometimes uh, contribute with weight loss, uh, with diarrhea at night, uh, with persistent pain, with a lot of gases uh, in the lower abdomen. Um, when I work with people, they complain a lot about the pain, about the glasses, and about the inflammation. Um, some of the causes, and I say some of the causes, because they can be a lot, a lot of different causes. Uh, one is um, the muscle contraction in the intestine. Uh, why? Because the walls of the intestines are lined with different layers of muscle that they contract and they move food through the digestive tract. So sometimes uh, the contractions are stronger than normal, and that can cause gas, 
bloating or diarrhea. Uh, some other times uh, could be an imbalance uh, in the enteric nervous system. Uh, the enteric nervous system is the system of the digestive system. So for example, uh, we know that at the moment that we work uh, with the motion or with the body code, we ask the subconscious mind, what's the imbalance? What's the deep underlying reason that is creating this imbalance? But you can ask, you can go direct and you can ask, for example, if the enteric nervous system is happy, if it's working at optimal level, you can muscle test. Uh, why? Because the enteric muscle system, system is a connection with the brain, with the gut, and also the gut with the brain. So you can muscle test for this. Uh, a severe infection uh, can be related with the IBS because this can develop uh, after, after some years or after so many years. Uh, we need to remember that, for example, sometimes uh, we have or we can have like any type of viral or bacterial infection uh, and we treat it. But the energy of that bacterial infection or that pathogen, only the energy can be vibrating in the digestive system or in the gut area. Uh, stress, stress is super, super, super important. So for example, uh, a very good suggestion uh, if you are working with someone with this imbalance is uh, they need to exercise any kind of exercise, any type. If, if they don't like to exercise, at least walking. At least walking is good. Uh, and this is, for example, interesting. Um, I have seen, for example, that Jeff, he has dogs. But for example, if an animal, like for example, a dog needs to walk, needs to exercise, to have these movements uh, in the intestine and cool, we as humans, we need to do that. So to do exercise is important. And also when we exercise, uh, it helps to release the stress. Um, any change uh, in the gut uh, due to microbes, also uh, we need to check for that. We need to check for pathogens uh, in the digestive system, in the gut, in the small intestine, in the large intestine, etc. cetera. Um, some symptoms uh, that trigger uh, the IBS, food and stress. And Dr. Rick, uh, he was now uh, sharing with us something that is very important and that is related uh, with the lead. Uh, he was sharing uh, with us right now and he was saying that with people that he works with, uh, sometimes uh, that most of the people he works with this issue are women. And he says that it's a belief that when they were little, correct me, Dr. Rick, if, if I'm wrong, that when they were little, uh, the parents, they were saying, uh, you are not allowed to poo here, or you are not allowed to poo there. And that makes so much sense because it's a belief, that's programming. So um, food is very, very, very important. Um, it's some type of food with people with IBS that is not good for them, is better to avoid. Uh, like for example, dairy products like cheese, uh, beans, cabbage, uh, milk, carbonated drinks like soda, uh, caffeine. I will give more examples about food uh, and the stress. The stress, uh, the stress is our worst enemy for this imbalance and for so many other imbalances. Um, for example, um, some of the type of, of food that is good to avoid are like bread, cereal, made with, uh, with refined, not whole grain, like very high fiber products. Uh, everything, for example, um, sodas like Coca-Cola, everything that is soda, beans, lentils, uh, any type of carbonate beverage, um, the processed food. Processed food, for many reasons, is not good for us. Uh, is not good for us, and for IBS, definitely also is not good. Coffee, uh, 
alcohol, um, very high protein diet, uh, dairy products that I have mentioned, uh, especially um, cheese, uh, and something that I want that I want to share. That's the reason I have. This is not a chart that I have created. This is I took this chart from Donna Eden. Uh, the name of this of this chart is a uh, neurolymphatic clinic, uh, cleaning, clearing. Sorry, you cannot work with all these points at the same time or the same day because you will you you will have an imbalance. But every day you can work, for example, with two neurolymphatic points. Here I have the instructions. I will share with everybody this presentation. But for example, um, for the IBS, for imbalance in the digestive system, uh, some points that are very important to stimulate, and you don't need to put a lot of pressure. At the moment you will, you will tap the point, or at the moment you will touch the point, you will see if they hurt. If they hurt, this means that your body needs it. So you can stimulate this point. For example, uh, for the small and the large intestine here, we can see the part in the inner tight that is here. So these are the neurolymphatic points for the small intestine. So you can stimulate that part and give, a, and give a gentle massage. You can go down to the knees and then up. The neurolymphatic points for the large intestine are here, are outside here. It's like, let's imagine uh, that we are wearing right now a pair of jeans. And the jeans, they have lines in or left in the outside and in the inner and, and the in, in the inner part. So where we have the lines of the genes, so there is exactly where we have these neurolymphatic points. So also you can massage and you can be gentle uh, the large intestine points. Also here I will show here for example we have the iliosecal valve. Uh, and then here we have the Houston valve. I need something interesting because the Houston valve, yes, uh, is related with the digestive system, but also is related uh, with the sciatica. Mm -hmm. So these two valves are not only related uh, with the digestive system or with the IBS, but is good for people that is having an imbalance. Uh, IBS or any imbalance in the, in the digestive system, it's good to, to massage the bowel, to open the bowel. Mm -hmm. How you can do it? Mm -hmm. I'm sharing links of some videos. So you can watch the videos and you can see how to do it. But to work with the bowel is very easy. With the hand, only we will put the hand down here and then we will go up one time, two times, three times and we breathe in and then we breathe out. And what we are doing is we are opening the bowel. We are giving energy to the bowel to be happy, to be in balance. So uh, for example, here you have more points, uh, but these will be like the points I will suggest to stimulate. Then, for example, I will suggest to work with this meridian pathway. And something that is nice is that uh, as energy healers, uh, you, you can work with yourself and you can work with your clients and you help them with the modality that you know and with the modality that you are working. But at the same time, you can explain to your clients how they can work with the meridian pathway and explain them, show them, we have talked already about meridians. It's a lot of information also out there about meridians. So if you explain to them, they can work with their own meridian system and also be helped. So the six main meridians that will help 
for digestion that will that will help for all these digestive systems is like the stomach meridian uh, and for and, and of course it's important uh, that people with this imbalance they will eat a uh, food that is easy to digest <clears throat> they or you can energy test for the type of food uh, also a good suggestion is to drink before or after water not during the meal um, then uh, spleen meridian is another meridian that is important to work with uh, and for example a suggestion here is uh, it's important uh, to eat natural sugars not uh, over processed sugars like sugar in candies uh, the food, all the processed food has a lot of sugar, uh, etc. Uh, to eat uh, warm and no sugar in food, also that's important. Uh, you can muscle test for that. To walk outside uh, barefoot, to walk a little bit. Uh, also this helps because also working barefoot helps us to ground with the energy of the earth. Um, to work with the large intestine meridian as well is important. Uh, to drink a lot of water, etc. Then uh, to work and stimulate the small intestine meridian, it's important. Uh, Cynthia has talked uh, a lot uh, already about probio pro probiotics. Mm -hmm. Why is very important to intake pro pro mm -hmm. probiotics? Sorry, I have problem with that word. That's and they, right. <laughs> and to and to and to have it at night. Um, working with liver meridian uh, also is important in this issue uh, to neutralize the toxins and control the free energy, the T energy, to have the balance between the yin and the yang. Mm -hmm. uh, it's important uh, that people will take a break of caffeine, of alcohol, uh, for um, sometimes, uh, unfortunately, sometimes people complain a lot about this imbalance, but they don't want to quit caffeine or they don't want uh, to quit uh, some, type of, some type of food that is not good for them and is not good uh, for, the, for the gut, is not good for the digestive system. The gold bladder meridian is and other very important meridian uh, to work with. Uh, and as well, it's important uh, to eat uh, the good fats, the healthy fats, like the, the avocado, for example, the fat that the avocado has. Um, so these are some suggestions. Uh, the other suggestions, and here I have the links, is to work with these two valves, with the, with the iliosecal valve, with the Houston valve, with the vagus nerve. The vagus nerve is super important to work with. Um, we can uh, respect our vagus nerve. The vagus nerve is the cranial nerve number 10, and it's a way with our hands that we can balance. I will share a video because it's something that is easy to do, and we can work with our hands and we can respect the, the, the vagus nerve. Um, so these are some suggestions that I will give. And then here, uh, I did a research uh, of the best type of food for IBS, but this is very important. Um, not what works for me, for example, it will work for someone else. So always test for the food. Test for the food that is a good food for the person. You can test the food in a scale from one to 10. And if you test eight, nine or 10, that will be, that is a good food, food for them. Because perhaps I will energy test, uh, is chicken good for my, for my digestive system, for my gut? And perhaps it's yes, but the number is one. And perhaps if I muscle test turkey, turkey will be an A. So then that means that turkey is better for me than chicken. So here you have some examples like uh, chicken, turkey, um, eggs, uh, salmon, uh, 
and other um, and other omega three um, fish, but energy test for that. Mm -hmm. uh, we have here uh, some vegetables that are good for the gut flora, like uh, some uh, carrots, eggplant, fennel, but energy test for this because it could be that for some person, a uh, tomato is not good, or they need to take the seed of the tomato. Uh, but for other person, tomato will be very good. Um, and then um, energy test, uh, the type of green vegetables, of greens that are good for them. Uh, they can do juices, they can, they can eat them. And, and an energy test, what's the best for the, the person? What's the best for the client? raw or cook. Um, here we have, um, for example, a good for the flora, like avocado, banana, um, olive, etc. Some nuts that are anti-inflammatory. And some types of seeds, like chia seeds, uh, flax seeds, ferment food, uh, fermented uh, drinks like the kefir, like kombucha, um, et cetera. So here we have other greens, uh, like kale. But for example, I have seen uh, with some people uh, that if they eat, for example, a lettuce, it's not good for them. And immediately they have a lot of inflammation uh, I have seen with some people like uh, spinach, for example, is not good for them. So these are some foods, but always energy test for that, energy test and muscle test for that. And um, so having a good diet, a good lifestyle, releasing stress, doing some exercise, and of course, working with them will help them a lot. Thank you so much. Thank you, Paula. That was very extensive. Bless you. Can I, can I just add a couple of things? Sure. Of course. Sure. Um, first of all, I love the whole energy approach, something I don't do, but um, I wish I could, but it just is, doesn't fit into my practice, but it's, it's perfect for what you guys are doing. The um, couple of things. One, the gluten is just yeah. devastating. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I tell my patients, if you're going to work with me, you got to be gluten-free, whether it's IBS, whether it's Crohn's, you name it. Okay. And then getting back to the vagus nerve, I've started to play around a lot with it. Mm -hmm. And as you pointed out, it's, it's critical. There's two play, there's a couple of points around uh, pressure points that um, can stimulate the vagus. Uh, I use two points in the ear. Mm -hmm. And I actually have this little machine <laughs> that I can actually hook up. I just started to play with it and I'm starting to use it in, in women with severe gastroparesis and um, to see if I, I can stimulate movement. So, uh, but yeah, the whole vagus nerve and using the pressure points, I, I think can make a tremendous difference. Mm -hmm. And there's ways of stimulating the vagus nerve without pressure points. Right. Um, cold showers. The um, believe it or not, singing, humming, mm -hmm. uh, gagging yourself with a toothbrush. I mean, all <laughs> of these. Believe it or not, all of these things stimulate the vagus nerve, and they're very simple to do. So, on top of the pressure points, these are some other cool ways of. Right, and Donna Eden also has one where she does the vagus nerve where course without glasses on you'd go flat against your eyes you'd come out go behind yeah. your ears and go down and come to your heart chakra and you do that three times yeah also help yeah. stimulate it so it's we always want to have our vagus nerve functioning at a thousand percent no matter what it it needs to be functioning because remember it goes throughout our whole body and people don't realize that it runs so many things oh it, it runs <laughs> and as you pointed out it's the, what the tenth cranial nerve it right. literally innervates everything from the rectum up to the brain. Right, so. right. Now, this is just something I did for Crohn's. And we know that Crohn's an irritable bowel, including the microbiome and the importance of the candida diet. We went over that. And these are probably on the wrong side. 
you may are. So we know Crohn's disease is an inflammation of the bowel itself. Now, most people are told when they have Crohn's disease, you're not gonna get rid of it. You're gonna have it for life. We need to take that toxic noise out of their ears because it can be healed. Or we can't say that, it can be made well. So we can do that through many ways and people aren't aware of that. So Crohn's can affect any part of your GI tract. Now, I don't know if I can move this over here. Aha, then you can read. Crohn's can affect any part of the GI tract. It can be in balances from the mouth completely to the anus and commonly affects the ends of the small intestine. And remember also, that is where it links to the colon, but the small intestine also has pyrus patches in it when the inflammation gets too high. So we need to make sure we reduce that. And remember that Crohn's can also not only affect that part of the bowel, but it can affect our eyes, our skin, and our joints. And it is painful for people that have Crohn's. So who gets this disease? And this blew my mind. Up to 20% of people have first degree relatives that have irritable bowel syndrome. And it affects men and women equally. And over 780,000 people are plagued by this disease, which would occur at any age. And to me, I thought that was too much. I thought that was asinine. There's another way. We have got to get it out there to them. So normally diagnosed between the ages of 15 and 35, but it can go even younger and even older. And the symptoms may be very, very mild to very, very severe. And that's not a good thing to have. So, and here we go back to play with this. Three factors that contribute to Crohn's. Remember autoimmune. Our autoimmune response is not functioning at the proper percentage it should be functioning at. We can test that. We can ask it, is it physical? Is it mental? Is it emotional? Is it spiritual? Are they all working together? Are they all connected to the brain? Is the brain connected to all of it? And if it's not, remove those imbalances. You'd be surprised at what you find. And in Crohn's, you will also find different parts of the colon and the digestive system are disconnected from that, okay? So remember also genetics. Genetics, well, we can now change, but they couldn't change. So it's passed down. It's passed down through hereditary. And I know that a lot of my family that have Crohn's, I'm, I'm not one of them and I'm not going to have it. So as we said, thought of as an autoimmune disease, but it's very unpredictable. And that's what's scary for the patient. No one knows how it will affect a certain person due to our uniqueness, but the doctor doesn't know always either. And they guess and they punch and they poke. And then pretty soon you may have more problems than what you really want to have. So it's not caused by something you did. Please remember that. So many people think, oh, what did I do? What did I do? You didn't do it. So get it out of your head. Don't carry that energy. That energy is not good for you. Can it be contagious? Hmm. You cannot catch it. So many people think you can. Not happening. You're not catching it. And this brought on is not brought on by something you ate or something you drank. And so many people think it is. And that's what their doctor tells them. And Dr. Rick will tell you, no, that's not. That's not right. It's developed because of our stressful lifestyle. Our lifestyle is so intense right now. And it has been for a long time. But now we're seeing it wrap even tighter. And what's going to go first? But our gut microbiome. Okay. So many things just start falling apart. When stress is overwhelming your body. So the immune system, as we know, is a network of beautiful cells. 
and tissues and organs that work together in order to protect our body. But at times, those organs, cells, attack one another and they do just the opposite of what you want it to do. So which means the immune system is actually attacking itself rather than the bacteria it needs to kill. And it cannot tell the difference between what is good bacteria and what is bad bacteria. And same thing with viruses and pathogens, it can't tell the difference because your immune system is so imbalanced. So normally harmless bacteria in the GI tract, many aid the digestive system, which we already know, right? But there aren't harmed by the immune system responses that is going on within your body. So with Crohn's disease, disease, excuse me, these bacteria are mistaken for harmful invaders. So those cells just go after it and eat it. And then it kind of, I would call it almost atrophy in that piece of that gut. So the production and the production, production of inflame, inflammation, sorry, my Mm, mouth is hurting. My in, in, inflammation is really intense in the, uh, a GI tract. I was once in on a surgery of a person that had cancer and they also had Crohn's and they showed us the different parts in his intestine of where he had cancer and where he had Crohn's. And it was unbelievable how black, when it's supposed to be vibrant pink, how black it was. So we need to really watch what we're doing and how we're doing things and how we're eating. With Crohn's, once the inflammation is triggered by the immune system, it does not subside. And of course, that leads to chronic inflammation, which is ongoing and ongoing. And then that can lead to an ulceration anywhere within there. And then you have thickening of the intestines. Have any of you heard of that, Rick? I'm sure you have. But have yeah. you heard of thickening of the intestines? And then our food can't pass. So eventually the patient's symptoms get much grander and worse. So the illness is characterized by chronic and long-lasting inflammation. And we can say inflammation 10,000 times and it's not enough because it is, it's really sad what it does. So this extends through all the layers of the intestinal walls, and it involves the adjacent lymph glands. And as Paulo mentioned about IBS, the diarrhea, the periodic cramping, the fever, the lower and right abdominal energy, the body, everything. Anemia plays a huge part. So, and here we go playing with this again. I have to figure this out. So the nutrients we need. We all need nutrients to build our body, no matter what. Even though at times we need to detox, we also need to build. So the nutrients, acidophilus is the lowest one. Then there's bifidophilus, there's probiotic 11, and there's ones that are even higher and have more gut bacteria in it. And you need to put those in the freezer for those don't die because if they're out on the counter, they're going to die. You want those bacteria. You want to take them at night. If you want to reclaim your gut bacteria, take them when you eat to help you aid when you're eating. Garlic is an excellent antibiotic and helps. Protein supplements, magnesium, but remember too much magnesium will cause you to have diarrhea. Aloe vera juice is such a blessing for people with abdominal issues. Drink it. I do daily. It doesn't taste good, but I do daily. Primrose oil. You can rub that on your tummy or you can take it internally. I took it internally a couple of times and threw up. So I'm not going to do that again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, not again. Not again. No. Vitamin Bs are very important also. But remember, you can get too toxic with vitamin Bs. So test every single day, not just once in a great while. Lay them all out on your lap. If what ones of these work for my highest good today? 
and you test and you test for how many you test, you take it out, put it out, put the bottle back on your lap and you test them all that way. Spirulina is very important for our gut. And that's one of those I use every day too. Good thing it comes in little capsules because the liquid spirulina, even though it doesn't taste too bad, it's a minty flavor. It stains everything. Now the herbs themselves, Echinacea is well known for its beautiful work for antibiotics in our body. Garlic is a naturally known antibiotic. Golden seal, the only thing with golden seal, if you have a blood sugar problem, you may not be taking this. Please do not take it. Potty Arco, you can use it in a liquid, you can use it in capsules, and you can use it in bulk to make a tea. If you have fibro and your immune system is flying off the roof, making bulk tea, putting into glass jars, and it tastes like dirt so bad, it's not even funny. It tastes horrible, but it sure does help. Um, I now take the capsules because I can't handle drinking it. And rose hips. Rose hips works beautifully. So the more to it, <clears throat> as we always know, Drink plenty of water, plenty of water. Change the diet. So many people don't want to change their diet. They're afraid you're going to take, oh, you're going to take my favorites away. How about I add some wonderful goodness to your diet? And we'll talk about those other things in a different time. And let's talk about foods you need to avoid. And if those are some of your things that you absolutely love and don't want to, let's find an alternative or let's just back off and watch what your body does when you back off of them. During an attack, when somebody has a Crohn's attack, they need to eat baby food. During an attack, baby food, steamed vegetables. When we eat raw vegetables, it is good for us if our body is at optimal health and we can, can do that. But when we're older, we have a harder time breaking these down because of our enzymes. So we need to add enzymes. Remember, and this is a really big one, stress we cannot avoid. We can learn how to handle it. We can learn our triggers and we can learn how to lower it. That we can do. We cannot handle what's going on around us. So stay present where you are and what you're doing and make sure you're grateful for what you are doing. Avoid spicy foods. Some people, it doesn't matter, but to people with this, it does. Alcohol, we already know. Caffeine, those already dehydrate you. Chocolate and dairy products need to be refrained from, and I can't speak that enough. Steam, boil, or bake your foods, and a lot of people don't like to do that. They would rather just open it and have it. Let me move this back over here. We're going to be doing a lot of cuts. Okay. So supplements to aid. Turmeric may be a nice aid if you test for turmeric. If you do not, do not take it. Because a lot of people, as we've talked many times here, oh, this is so great. I hear this is so great. And they run out and take it and they get sick. Well, you didn't test. You don't know that it was good enough for your body. So along with the aloe vera, which I mentioned, um, an anti-diarrhea that we utilize here in our house is called black charcoal if it gets to be too much, but diarrhea is also a way for us to flush toxins, but we may need to stop it. And remember probiotic, add liquid minerals to our drinks, trace minerals. They are so important. No matter how much food we eat, we're not going to get enough in our body. Fluid, of course, is a replacement. Remember that we're just not hydrating our body. We're hydrating everything. And those cells need that hydration. I hear people say, oh, yeah, I drink eight glasses of water. Are you absorbing what you're drinking? Are you drinking what type of water? What quality of water? So there's so many things to look at that people don't think about. So antibiotic use. Because antibiotics kill normal and good bacteria, what we can use that is natural is colloidal silver. Test for how many ounces a day. Olive leaf extract. Test 
oregano oil, bees, tea tree, and there's so many others. And also remember that your client may require arm. They may require vitamin D. And as I mentioned, they may require vitamin D. Now the gut flora. Now I took this off of something else and I didn't really like it, but they didn't have a lot. And I'm not good at creating um, like Paulo is with these beautiful little things. And I'm going to try to unmute you, Rick. Why can't I unmute you? Rick, can you unmute yourself? It won't let me unmute you for some reason. I think I unmuted myself. Can you hear me? Yep, I can hear you. I can hear you. Now, uh, just, a couple, just a couple of things. Uh, I used a ton of colloidal silver for everything, mm -hmm. um, uh, topically, internally. Mm -hmm. um, the, um, I could mention this now or later, this information is, is so, so critical because the alternative is the biologics, the drugs. Mm -hmm. And um, the think drugs like Umera, the TNF inhibitors, and they do more damage than good. They shut down your immune system, you get sicker. I, I mean, it's just, it's just absolutely, I spend more time getting people off those things mm -hmm. uh, using uh, interventions like this. And so this information is, is absolutely critical for people that are struggling with uh, IBS, but certainly, mm -hmm. certainly Crohn's. And I know our gut microbiome is so important because there's so many things that the microbiota itself and what all it takes and people don't realize how important it is. And they kind of laugh you off when you talk about normal gut bacteria <laughs> if you notice that they don't understand but it's so imperative and this is why it's imperative let me stop here i'm gonna have to come back and share here and rick i'm sure you deal with this all the time this candida, yeah. candida, candida albicans is horrible and so many people Almost every single, I would say almost every single person has candida of some form or another. It's mild. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, you know, I, when I do a stool test, it's unusual not to see it. Mm -hmm. Especially in children. Yeah. Unfortunately. And if you've ever seen a child with thrush, that's an overgrowth of candida. Mm -hmm. And parents don't realize that. So letting your kids have candy and, you know, just letting them, oh, just go open up a pop tart and eat it and stuff like that is not well for anybody. So this candy to handout will be attached with the webinar, but there's so many things that we should do. Like don't use colored toilet paper, use only white toilet paper. Tampons should not be used. And candida can be transferred and you can transfer it through the whole family. So wash your clothes in borax. Okay. Um, the best deodorant is the, the candida stone and you, you will sweat and you will have odor, but it's clean, completely clean. I even rub it on my owies when my, when I have owies on my skin, it just within 24 hours, even though I have other things, it's, really amazing when you take a shower dry skin brushing is so very important we've got to get our skin to breathe this is the largest organ let it breathe so many people just smother it and smother it and don't scrub it lightly wash it i know we're all going to get old and wrinkly it doesn't really matter so let's give respect to our body where it needs to be and let's help our immune system now, rose hips is recommended to provide the vitamin C that's not alkaline. So be careful if it is alkaline because you can get, I didn't even think about it last week. I knew my body needed vitamin C. I grabbed the only thing we did. And what does it do but make you break out all over from her reef? Okay, it's just too much. Well, stress, but. So when you have candida, 
there's three levels. There's mild, moderate, and severe. When you have severe, do not eat fruit. People do not understand. No salad dressings, no tea, no anything like that. When you eat a good meal and you don't eat, see, people don't understand. They eat, eat, eat until they're full. People eat past time being full. You need to eat until you're comfortable. And then as you know, as a tradition, people eat their dessert after their chow, after their supper. So if it's a fruit dessert, what's going to happen? Fruit digest so much more quickly. And all of a sudden, you've got a steel in your stomach. So if you have severe candida, no sweets. No, nothing, um, not even a white potato, not even a sweet potato. Moderate, it tells you how you can do it. Um, vegetables, this is what you can eat. But eat when you're allowed to have a fruit, eat it on an empty stomach two hours prior or two hours afterwards. Do not create a steal. You can smell it in your breath. Halitosis comes out horribly. You have upset GI. There's so much that can talk about. <clears throat> And here, the meat they talk about is turbot, tuna, Atlantic cod, chicken, and turkey. But again, not everything is for everybody, and not all of our bloods are made the same. So muscle test what is good for you at your optimal level. And here's the grains, but we also have to watch with grains. Now is the arsenic in the grains. So we have to be careful for that. Everything it seems that we eat or drink, and I misspelled there, right by you. It won't let me fix it. Um, everything we eat or drink seems to be toxic. <clears throat> so taking Jeff's zeolite, or Jeff, sorry, Dr. Rick. Dr. Rick zeolite is perfect for us to do. And Rick, can we take that for the rest of our life, every day for the rest of our life? I do. Yeah, just assume that we're toxic mm -hmm. um, and we're going to be exposed to toxins for the rest of our life. Zeolite also is a great binder you know, getting back to IBS and mm -hmm. um, uh, it also, if you have diarrhea, it binds beautifully, but it, it, it's, it's wonderful for uh, uh, acidifying or alkalizing uh, mm -hmm. if you're acidic and everybody is. So yeah. it's, it's, one, it's one of those wonderful things. You just have to be careful because it can uh, cause a little bit of constipation, but if you take it with aloe, you're good to go, literally. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yes, literally, <laughs> literally, yes. Um, these are some of the symptoms from candida. And you may be shocked because antisocial is one of them. Anxiety, adrenal failure. But these also, these symptoms also go along with so many other imbalances within our body. So let's work with it as a whole. Let's work with it emotionally, mentally, physically, and spiritually, and bring it together as one. Now, the natural treatments are eliminate antibiotics. Antibiotics kill that normal bacteria. Birth control kills that normal bacteria. Cortisone and most drugs upgrade your immune system and do what you need to do. When it mimics all of these different kinds of imbalances within our body, it is hard to tell which one is what. But remember, everything is connected. So if you're feeding an organ, another organ, gland, system is going to be enhanced. No matter what, it's going to be enhanced. If you run your meridians and clear those meridians or your neurovascular points that Paula was talking about, that will also clear. A few weeks ago, I started running my meridians every day and I could tell a difference. There is a difference. So rub those points. Do for yourself what you can do because it's amazing that we can help ourselves. I mean, I just think the, go ahead, Rep. Uh, the, just one comment on diet. The operative word there is sugar. Yes. Uh, yeah. It's the worst thing in the world. It's the worst thing in the world for cancer. Cancer loves sugar. Candida loves sugar. Um, white stuff turns into sugar. Right. Uh, ergo, the potato recommendation. Right. So um, 
if you if you did nothing else, you eliminate sugar from your diet, uh, to generally. Right, right, and that's really hard for people to do because oh, you're taking that away, you're taking that away. But what if we give you a fruit? Like if they're stuck on a candy, what if we give you a fruit that is more nutritious and more sweet and better for you than that candy you're putting down your throat? Well, sugar is very addicting. I'm working with, a matter of fact, I had an appointment uh, this afternoon with her, um, working with some diet stuff with her, and she's addicted to sugar. Oh, so and, many people are. And she says, you know, uh, you know, I said, look, you're going backwards here. Well, I, I can't help it. Uh, you know, I, I, I see sugar and I go nuts. And I said, well, <laughs> you and the rest of the world. I mean, it's tough. It's, it's it is. Tough. That, Rick, is what's called an addictive heart energy. And she just needs it. Uh, and then she won't crave it. And it's really easily done. I can teach you how to do that. No, actually, I need you. I need her to talk to you. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. I didn't even ask, does anybody have any questions? Because Paula and I just went to Zoom and we were through and we didn't even stop. Does any, anybody, Barb, you have any questions? Well, I just have a comment. Mm -hmm. um, my daughter has had horrible candida. She's eliminated everything. She thinks everything triggers it except air. <laughs> and, I'm sorry I'm not that's just, I'm sorry and I steered her toward N-A-E-T Nate I don't know if you mm -hmm. um, are familiar with that it has changed her life oh thank god she was imbalanced in her core mm -hmm. her vitamins how she accepted A's and B's and C's um, she wasn't, it, she was taking them, but they weren't being absorbed. Um, it then balanced out salt and sugar. She's been going for two months. She cannot believe how much her inflammation has gone down. What, she what, still what has is that, if you don't mind my asking? What is um, NAET is a way it's, it's advertised as a way to treat allergies, mm -hmm. but they're energized mm -hmm. vials of water. Oh, okay. And then um, she puts several and she muscle tests. She has a little muscle testing machine. And I just got, um, she's actually working on my lungs and she found staph infection in there. And she's working on that now for me but it has helped so much with gluten intolerance, you know, just so now I kind of avoid gluten, but every once in a while, if I eat it, I don't go off the charts and, and feel like, oh, I shouldn't have done that. It has really helped. But my daughter, it has like changed her life. That's good. Wow. She'll probably be going to her for another three to four months because she's um, tested sensitive to almost everything. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But she needs to check if there's an intolerance or if she hasn't actually allergic to it. There's a, there's a difference between the intolerance right. and an intolerance can just be an emotion. She may have had something when she was young and it gave her an emotion and that stuck and it stuck with that fruit or with that food and it's there and now she can't eat it. That's true. That happens to a lot of them. Mm-hmm. It always happens when you're young and you can't eat it when you're older. I found that in a lot of children and a lot of older adults that say, I really crave this. I really want this, but I can't have this. Why can't you have it? Why are you depriving yourself that sweetness? Well, because my mom told me I couldn't have it. Well, your mom's not here sitting right here. You're, you're 40 years old. Go eat it. And she said, really? It's okay? Yeah, it is. So we have to remember, we need to change our beliefs, those limiting ones, those ones that stop us from crossing the threshold because they can stop us in our tracks, unfortunately. Yeah. Thank you for sharing, Barb. Mm -hmm. Thank There's you. only two practitioners in Iowa. Oh, they, okay. So it isn't like you're not going to have one in every town. They aren't real common. So people drive for quite a distance for their treatments. 
Yeah, I know there's not one. Of, well, we do have one around here, but she's really, really rude. So um, that's the only one I know of her. And there's no. Well, I asked her how she got started, and she said her youngest of four couldn't eat eggs, couldn't eat uh, cheese. And so she said it'd be cruel to let the rest of the family eat that in front of her since she was so little. And so she thought, we can't live like this. We can't oh. go here to a restaurant because of her allergy. So she got interested and became a practitioner. Oh, beautiful. And now her daughter can eat anything she wants. Beautiful. Wow. That's beautiful. Maybe she'd like to come on and give us a little talk about that. You know, she just might. Why don't you give her an ask? Okay, beautiful. Everybody, if you just want to buy your hug. And let's just give thanks. Heavenly Father, we thank you for being present with us here tonight and for the discussions and for everybody to be here and to be blessed by your holy, holy word and by your wellness that you give the healing practitioners what we need to make our clients well. And we bless you and we thank you and we're very grateful. Amen. Thanks for the good info, ladies. <laughs>